This first video is going to be just an overview of the Shortel Connect client. As you can see, I've got the Shortel Connect client open here on my screen, and this is kind of your base view. Some of you will not have any of these uh, keys currently programmed, uh, but these toolbars can be programmed on everyone's Connect client through the Shortel Connect director. So I'm going to start at the left here. Uh, this button is our dialer. This is if I was using strictly a soft phone and not using a desk phone and I needed to send dial tone. For instance, when you call in, hit an auto attendant and they want you to send in numbers. Hit one for this guy, two for this guy. This is where you can press it. You could also technically dial a number from this point as well. Next to the dialer is the, where you can input a name and number. I could input an individual. I can start looking for someone in my organization, and as I type it, it'll search through my contacts and it'll find it. As I type a number, it'll do the same thing. That is your quick dialer. Below that, on the left side, is my current state. If I click this and go down, I have where I can change to available, in a meeting, out of office, jump disturb, vacation, and custom. Next to that is my personal profile and personal settings. This is the name of the user, the direct number of the user, the extension number of the user. They don't necessarily have to be the same last four digits. That's just the way that we set ours up. I can edit here and add a picture from LinkedIn. The settings, that brings up my settings window, which we can get into later in a different video. And then also primary assignment. So primary assignment is the phone that I'm currently set to. And in order to change that, you notice I have it currently selected as desk phone. If I select soft phone, it'll actually completely get rid of my desk phone and it'll turn on my soft phone if I have a soft phone license. Below that is external extension assignment. External assignment number is a way for me to assign my extension to any 10-digit number that I'd like it to. This is how you can set it to ring to your cell phone when you're out of the office, but still run through the phone system, and people would still see you as on the phone. And they can also transfer it to you. You can answer calls coming in through work groups and hunt groups. So if I wanted to create an external assignment number, I would click that. I would select a label. I'm going to call this desk phone. Add a number. Let's say I wanted to make the extension of David Dollar my personal extension. Or my personal number, I could put that in there. I can add when the call comes through. If I want to automatically connect, when I answer the phone, I can select that. Or if I want the phone to announce that this is an enterprise short tail call, press 1 to accept, I can turn that on. I'm going to do press 1 to accept so I know for a fact it's an enterprise call coming through. And then how many rings I want it to try me before it goes to voicemail. And again, this is an extension assignment, so it's still going through the phone system. If it hits voicemail, it'll go through your short tell voicemail. I'm going to say four times. Once that's good, I can select it, and I will select you selected number. Now that'll create my extension. It'll take off uh, my name off my phone on my desk. My phone will now say anonymous, and any call that hits this direct number up here would call my cell phone. I'm going to go ahead and put it back to desk phone for our purposes. Below the user there, we've got people. People is everyone in my directory. All extensions, all people that have been pulled in from my personal, uh, my personal Outlook contacts would all be through this directory. Next to people are groups. This is where I can create specific groups in my organization. Let's say I wanted to create a demo group. For instance, here at Genesis, we have a bunch of phones in our demo room with different names. I want to create one group for all of those phones. Well, I can scroll down to the bottom where it says new group, select that. I can give it a group name. I'm going to call it demo group. People, this is where I add the people in the group. Well, I know Lily Lira is one. I start typing the name and it'll find it. I know Penny Peso is one. I know the extension I'm on right now is David Dollar. That's one, that's me. And let's see if I can remember somebody else. Let's go ahead and put the demo conference room phone on there as well, and the demo 930D. So I created a group. I want to be able to call those people at any time. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here and hit Save Changes. 
has now created this group. If, so back to where I was before, if I hit people now, I select groups, I can now see demo group. If I select that, I can start a group chat if I have the conference bridge on my short tail system, which allows instant messaging. I can schedule a meeting with the group, again, if I have the conference bridge, or I can send a group voicemail, and here are the members in this group. Alternatively, back at the people location, I can go to the very top here where it says all. It's showing all people currently. I can click that drop down and I can tell it to sit and show only favorites, which is I create those by selecting the little star next to their names here. That makes them a favorite. Or I can actually select which group I want to see. And this is kind of the standard screen I like to start off with my connect client at my desk. So I can see all the individuals I call the most. I can see their availability status by the green next to their name. And I can see their current status below their name. If I wanted to call Lily Lira, I could simply just double click. It makes a call. So here I am on a phone call with Lily Lira. I can see down here, this is my call stack. I can see the total time I'm on the call and the option to hang up the call or the option to put the call on hold. Alternatively, I see that information up here as well. I can hang up a call, I can place a call on hold. Drop down menu allows me to do other things. I can dial a mailbox, send voicemail, other options there. While I'm on the call, from up here, I can mute the call. Now I've muted myself. If I have video capabilities, I can create a video call with this. Next to that, I've got share your screen. If I have a conference bridge, again, allows me the ability to share my screen with that individual. Next to that is add a participant. That's if I want to create an ad hoc conference call, meaning that I add them one at a time. The short tail system out of the box, you can support up to six callers and through an ad hoc conference a call. So if I wanted to add somebody, let's say I wanted to add Penny Peso, I select the add. Name of extension is going to be Penny Peso. There it is. I select it. And from there, I can either conference, which means it's going to automatically blindly conference that individual when they answer the phone or I can consult with them to see if they're ready for that call. So if I hit consult, it'll press, put my current call on hold, it would call the new individual, and I can ask them if they're ready for the conference call. I'm gonna go ahead and just conference them in. Okay, let me do that again for you. I just wanna make sure that was the right phone. So I'm gonna add Penny Peso to the conference call. I'm gonna conference. Now we're on a conference call. I can see the people that are on the call is Penny Peso and Lily Lira. I can see how long the conference call has been going. I've got some info here. This is Penny's information right there. And there I go. I'm on a phone conference call now. So very, very simple at that point. If I hang up, it ends the conference call. Alternatively, if I hang up, uh, Penny and Lily are actually still on the conference call, so I don't end it for everybody. Uh, I'm going to go back to my people and call Lily Lira again. So I'm on the call again. Uh, next to conference is transfer. If I select transfer, it works the exact same way as a conference call. I can select Lily Lira. and I can transfer, that's a blind transfer to her. I can consult, I can park the call on her extension. I can do an intercom, I can whisper her, or I can just send it to her voicemail. So if I hit transfer, the call is now gone, and it's now rang over through to Penny Peso. Very, very easy done right here on the Connect client. Below people, I have recent. Recent shows me, it, all my history basically. If I have up here at the top left, if I keep it on everything, it'll show me my entire call history. Missed calls, made calls, voicemails, all that fun stuff. Calls that I made, your voicemails. I can either say to show all or just missed. Under everything, I can change it to just so calls. I can show it to just so voicemails. I want to see only my voicemails. And I can do messages if I have IM available through the conference bridge. 
If I do voicemails, I can show the lead of voicemails as well by selecting that, or flagged if I want to do that. I'm going to do all. To listen to voicemail, I can simply click it. it shows me who the voicemail is from, which is our sales director. It shows me my entire history with that individual as well. I can hit reply. I can hit forward. Let's say this is an important voicemail that I needed uh, the owner to, know, to hear. I can hit forward and I can send who it's to. I can add other individuals. I can give it a subject. Um, I can make it, mark it as urgent, private, give it a, ask for a receipt, uh, that type of fun stuff. And I can also give a, a, a greeting to it. I can click record and it'll open up on the phone. I can say, hey, I received this this morning. You need to listen to it. Hit stop and send it all to Deb and she will get a voicemail telling her that message that I gave her followed by the message I just sent to her. I'm going to cancel that so I don't fill her voicemail box up. To go ahead and minimize these again. Below recent is events. This is for those of you who have a conference bridge and can set up conference calls for people to call in. I can actually go down here to new event, select that, I can give it a title, I can create the date and when it starts and ends, how long it lasts, how often it occurs, what the on site location is, the meeting type presentation or collaborative, the organizers, the presenters. I can even give it agenda. I can say for the first 10 minutes, we have the intro for 10 minutes, and then we can have phase one, 15 minutes, phase two, for 20 minutes, and then I can do uh, Q&A. minutes. When I do that, it even shows me the breakdown of the meeting. And as the meeting is going on, those of, those of us who are logged in or called into the meeting through the Shortel app will actually see where the meeting is on this meter. I can give it an overview and I can then also click down here if I want to change some settings like the calling codes and all that fun stuff. Create the invite. It creates the conference call. And now I will see that there is a new conference call that will start in five minutes. It's an upcoming meeting over down here in my uh, announcements. So I could actually click on it on the upcoming meetings. I can see how it's been set up, who the different organizers are, download an ICS file for an external calendar, all kinds of fun stuff here. I'm going to go ahead and cancel the meeting though because we don't need to have that today. Work groups are those of you who have work groups. This is where I can actually see voicemails that are left with my work group. So if I'm in a sales group or an accounting group and there's multiple users in that group, this is where I can see the voicemails for the, that particular group. And then down here, I've got my announcements. I, see, I can see I have a new voicemail. If I want to listen to it, I can just select that. It brings up my voicemails and I can listen to it. And this it says I've got a training coming up that I've been invited to. I'm going to exit out of that. Exit out of that. Accepting a call. Let's say that Lily Lear was going to call me. You'll notice that I've got a pop up down here in the bottom right. I can, or right here, and I can answer it. And now I answer. Speakers are very close together. I apologize. I answer the call, and we're back to what we saw last time. Here's my current call status. As more calls come in, I'll show you what that looks like. Now the call comes in. I have another pop-up. If I answer this new call, it'll automatically put the last call on hold, and it'll answer the new call. So now you'll notice that I have a call that's on hold, Billy Lira, and the call that I'm currently on. And I can even right here select to merge these calls. And I've now created a conference call. So it's a tool that you learn a lot as you use it and as you get used to it. It becomes very powerful. And that is everything that I have to show about the very basic uh, client and the overview of what you see when you first open it up. Thank you very much.